I'm a software engineer in my day job and I also build a ton of apps outside of my day job. And in this video, I'm gonna be going over some of my favorite gears and tools that I've been using as a developer over the past year. This video is gonna cover some of my favorite hardware gear as well as some of my favorite software tools. And they're not always gonna be necessarily purely for developers. This could just be for people that are just generally interested in technology, but there are gonna be some other developer specific gear as well that I'll go into later in this video. And I'll also make sure to include timestamps going over every Every single piece of gear, every single tool that I mention, and I also include links in the description as well. And the final thing that I'm going to mention before going into the various gears and tools that I use is the fact that in this video, I will be talking about a couple of products who historically have sponsored my channel in the past, but this video isn't necessarily sponsored by them. So some of the links I will include in the description down below are going to be affiliate links or tracking links, but this video has not been paid by anyone to influence anything that I see. These are just things that I genuinely enjoy using. All right, so let's get into it. The very first piece of gear that I want to talk about is actually this microphone right here. This is the Shure SM7DB, not just the normal Shure SM7B, it's the SM7DB specifically. I'm not an audio expert by any means necessary, but I have been eyeing this microphone for so damn long because I see every single podcast are using it. It's like the gold standard for microphones. And I got to say, it is one of the greatest purchases that I have ever made. Was it expensive? Yes, this was like $500. And then this little, this little adapter right here that makes it turn into a USB-C powered microphone, this adapter was also like a separate hundred dollars. So this entire setup was like $600. Oh, yikes, painful. But I find it to be so much more reliable than the previous mic I was using, which was the Blue Yeti X. That thing was disconnecting all the time. The audio just sounded awful compared to this. This one, I have it plugged in all the time. It works flawlessly. Highly recommend if you're trying to upgrade your video setup, whether that be for meetings or trying to record your own videos, this microphone is phenomenal. One of the best purchases that I've made. So much love for this. Now the next piece of gear that I actually want to highlight, which is actually kind of a bit of an oldie is my Apple Vision Pro. Yes, I own an Apple Vision Pro. I got it on launch weekend. And I gotta say, I probably didn't touch it for the past two to three months or so. It really just turned into a super expensive paperweight. But then over at WWDC, Apple announced some big updates that they are bringing into Vision Pro OS 2 that has made me really excited to use it again. And I've downloaded the public beta of the new Vision OS 2 for the Vision Pro. And I think it makes it a much more usable, much more fun product to use. In particular, the feature that stood out for me on the new Vision Pro that really want to start using the Vision Pro again for my day-to-day -day work is the ability to mirror your laptop screen in a bunch of different dimensions. Previously, you could only mirror your laptop screen into a 16 by nine dimension, but then they're gonna be adding support that lets you mirror your laptop screen into like a ultra wide dimension, like a 49 inch monitor, which is essentially two 27 inch monitors side by side with each other. Cannot wait for that to come out. It's not out yet at the time of filming this video in the public betas, but by the time it comes out later on in a couple months, I'm gonna be using that. And I think it's gonna to totally change my workflow. So really it's mostly just been in anticipation in the next coming months for that big feature update that I've been using it again, but I actually kind of forgot how much I like using this thing. I think it's really good for a productivity standpoint. I'm not a big media consumer. Like I don't watch movies or Netflix or YouTube on this really, but for working, I think it's really, really great. It essentially just gives me an infinite canvas to work off of and have like a dream work set up anywhere I go in the world. This was a really expensive paperweight, but I'm finally seeing some use cases for it again. And I'm very, very happy with it. All right, so now going over into some of my favorite software tools that I've been using. Number one has been this tool called Rectangle right here. I've actually been using this for probably two to three years at this point, a very, very long time. It's essentially a window tile management tool for your Mac. It essentially lets you quickly snap various parts of your window all around very, very quickly. I, I know that Mac, I believe latest Mac OS Sonoma announced more native support to like drag around the windows. You can drag to the side to snap it and stuff like that. And don't get me wrong, it, it works pretty fine, but I love the keyboard shortcuts that you can snap it to various parts of your screen. There's way more interesting stuff that you can do if you have a much bigger screen, like centering into thirds, two thirds, maximizing smaller, larger. I primarily just use it to split my screen in half. It's been an essential tool in my laptop usage and in my workflow for two to three years. Love window and tiling management, highly recommend it. And it's also open source. Thumbs up. Another one of my favorite tools that I've been using for the past two years or so is this tool called Al Dente. I believe it is a one-time purchase or there's also a free version of it. It's essentially a charge limiter for your laptop. So I purposely limit it to 80% because you know, batteries in general don't like being charged up all the way to 100%. It kind of degrades the battery health and essentially reducing the maximum limit of your laptop's charge to a lower percentage, like 80%, it extends the longevity of your battery health. So I keep it capped out at 80%. And I believe if you sign up for the pro plan, which I have done as well, 
you can do some pretty interesting things where you can automatically cycle the charges where you say, you know, randomly every two weeks or so, run it down all the way to 0% and run it all the way back to 100% to make sure the battery health just stays good. So this has been an integral app in my day-to-day -day use just to make sure that I extend the health of the battery of my laptop as long as possible. Highly recommend it. All right, and then now moving over to a bit more of a dedicated software tool, I wanna talk about my go-to text editor of choice, which has been Cursor. It is the AI powered text editor. It is so, so good. Trust me, I actually made a whole dedicated video talking about it. You can check it out on my channel, but TLDR is that previously I was using just normal VS code and then I actually switched to a JetBrains product like WebStorm particularly because I do a lot of full stack web development day to day and I've been a long time Hub Copilot user pretty much since it launched and I was really impressed by Copilot but a lot of my developer friends are like, bro, you gotta get on Cursor, man. It's so much better. And I'm like, man, shut your face, bro. What do you mean it's not it's that much better? Copilot's so good, what can be better? Cursor is so, so good. It's so much faster. My workflow is way, way faster. Once again, you can watch my dedicated video where you can see all the details about why I like Cursor, but just a high level overview is the fact that how quickly you are able to just chat with pieces of code with Command K or Command L right here. You can quickly edit it. And then as you do Command L, you can chat with it and you can chat with your entire code base to get way more context and writing out code. And I have personally found it to be way more accurate and way better than GitHub Copilot in terms of code generation. And I can spin out features so, so quickly by using Cursor compared to using GitHub Copilot previously. Highly recommend you check it out if you can. Another product that I've really been using that I've also talked about a ton on my channel already is Posthog, which is essentially an open source like product operating system where they have a lot of, basically it's kind of like your one-stop shop for everything related to product analytics, like user event tracking, web analytics, session replays, feature flags, A-B test surveys, blah, 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 blah. Really powerful stuff. They've been a great partner to the channel. I've used them for many years before I did any type of collaboration with them. And basically they're an essential part of any type of product that I build. It's also really affordable in terms of, you know, getting all the necessary web analytics and tracking that I do for any product that I build, because you kind of have to track your users and figure out how they're actually interacting with your application. And I think Postlog is the best platform to do that. It's an, an extra bonus point to the fact that they are open source. Even if they were closed source, I would still use them over other products like Mixpanel or Amplitude. Um, I think it just serves my needs very well. So being open source is just the extra brownie on top. And then another tool that I've actually been obsessed with using is Screen Studio. Essentially, it is this amazing screen recording tool that gets you these really sleek, really smooth animations as it follows your mouse and you interact with it. Basically, if you go to Tech Twitter and you see any really sleek product demo, it's all gonna be done using Screen Studio. And if you look at any of my videos as well as my channel, any really cool screen recording that I'm doing, it's all done via Screen Studio because it has all these really smooth, really sleek animations, super easy to use editor as well. It is, in my opinion, the best screen recording software out there and it's not even close. Highly, highly recommend you check out Screen Studio if you're looking for a really nice, really sleek screen recording tool. All right, switching over to the handheld cam because now we're gonna go over some more hardware about stuff that I've had on my desk. First up is I wanna talk about my keyboard of choice lately. It's the Kinesis Advantage 360 Pro. I've been using this probably for the past year or so and I love it, but it also just annoys the shit out of me. So I have a couple of other ergonomic keyboards, right? If you look over here you can see in the very back I have an ErgoDux and I also have this case right here this is a Moonlander so I do have two other split keyboards and so that means this Kinesis Advantage 360 Pro what a mouthful of a name this is my third split keyboard and I'll be the first to say that in terms of ergonomic keyboards the Kinesis keyboard is the most ergonomic it feels the most comfortable way more comfortable compared to the ErgoDux or the Moonlander that I have but if you do get the Kinesis Advantage 360, there's a pro version and a non-pro version, essentially the pro version, which is what I have. The reason why it's called pro is because it is completely wireless. It is connected via Bluetooth to my laptop, and it is also wirelessly connected to each other because normally for a split keyboard, you have a cable connecting it. And the non-pro version of the Advantage 360 is completely wired. It's wired to connect the two halves, and it's wired connecting to your laptop as well. And I've just found the Bluetooth and wireless connectivity of the Advantage 360 Pro to just not be the best. It's not awful, don't get me wrong, but it's more so like maybe once every two weeks or so, kind of randomly the Bluetooth will disconnect from my laptop and I have to just turn the keyboard off and back on or turn Bluetooth on and off on my laptop again. And if I'm dropping $400 for a keyboard, it shouldn't be doing that. So it's really a great keyboard, but 
just every now and then those minor annoyances just feel extra annoying. Still love it though. Most ergonomic keyboard hands down that I've ever used. And then another piece of gear that I've been using is this walking pad that I got. Uh, actually the walking pad company, I think that's what they call it. They actually sent this over to me for free, but they're not paying me or influencing anything that I say about this product. It looks crazy because it folds. So it folds completely out. So it folds out completely this way. Give it a little, a little push right there. Yep. And then there's your walking pad. And then I have this remote that controls everything. And I am obsessed with this thing so much. I actually previously before getting this walking pad, I had this cheaper, way, way cheaper uh, walking treadmill that I got off of Amazon. I think it was like two to 300 bucks. And I thought that there wasn't too much of a difference, but then I started using this higher quality one from walking pad and I can definitely feel the difference. The main difference is primarily in the build quality. The $200 walking treadmill that I got off of Amazon, it was just like so cheap. It actually started chipping away. I actually tossed it out because it kind of broke on me eventually. And the main complaints that I had with that was the fact that number one, it was really, really loud. Like the motor was super loud compared to the walking pad, which is way quieter. And then also with the cheaper walking treadmill that I got off of Amazon, after around 45 minutes to an hour of walking, it would overheat and it would actually just completely shut down. And you can start smelling like burning rubber or burning plastic, probably not good for my health. Gonna go out on a limb and say that. Whereas with the higher quality walking pad that I got, I used it for an hour and a half yesterday and I had no issues at all, no overheating, no weird smells of burning plastic. And also it's just way, way thinner and way more portable. The previous cheaper one that I got off of Amazon, it was huge. It was probably like double or triple the height and thickness that this one is. And then the cheaper one that I got off of Amazon previously, it did not fold up at all, which made it a huge pain in terms of moving it around. And like, it was just not the most easily maneuverable one. Whereas this one, the fact that you can fold it up really, really easily <sighs> makes it so much more portable such a great product and I really just am in love with this. I have been, I've just been pounding out miles on this and I love walking while working. It's just a great way to just get some steps in, be a little bit healthier, not have that dad bod, that nerd bod, you know what I'm saying? You know, gotta be healthy, get that movement in. Highly recommend it. I'll include a link down below in the description if you wanna check it out yourself. I'll also include a discount code that you can use. But that's about it in terms of all of the products and gear that I've been using, both hardware and software. Let me know what your thoughts are. Highly recommend trying them all out. I've been using every single tool that I mentioned I've been using for a very long time. It's been a staple part of my workflow for a long time as well. So try it out, let me know. And also leave some comments down below if there are certain tools that you really love that you wanna share. I'm always looking for some fun little things to try out every now and then. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.